Hey everybody and welcome to Meals with Melissa where I come up with healthier versions of things that you love to eat. Now, today is actually going to be part one of a two-part series because honestly, I came up with so many recipes, I was like, I can't even do all this in one episode. So, we're going to work on sugar-free frosting options. Now, last week we did an almond flour cupcake and it was chocolate. You can modify that to be whatever flavor you love, but who wants a cupcake, even a healthy one, without a little bit of frosting, right? Because that's part of having your cake and eat it too. So I have several recipes that are gonna work great. It really kind of comes down to flavoring, what you like, what you have on hand, uh, but each of these are sugar-free. They're great options um, and super, super easy. Now today I'm gonna make two. We're gonna make one that's a little more, not, I'm not gonna say complicated. I don't do complicated, that is not how I roll. Uh, but one is a, has a few more ingredients and one is super, super simple and really fast. Now I am going to be using Using my hand blender today so it's gonna be a little noisy in here but I just want to show you how easy these are to make and the next episode next weekend I have three more including a peanut butter frosting that is gonna be phenomenal so keep that in mind you're gonna to want to come back and watch the next one also remember that you can see all of my past episodes on my YouTube channel under Fillmore Fitness you can hop over there subscribe and it will notify you whenever we're posting something new it makes it super easy you can go back to all the ones I've ever done and there's some incredible ones that my family has loved including chocolate avocado cookies I know I can't even make them anymore because I eat them all all right so super super simple recipes today so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with one that is only two ingredients we're gonna use some heavy whipping cream and actually a sugar-free instant pudding mix so keep in mind it makes it super simple um, the great part about it is that um, again they're sugar-free they're easy to make now anytime that you're gonna use heavy cream or something to that effect you're going to have to refrigerate the recipe when done you can't just let these sit out because the heavy whipping cream will spoil. So keep that in mind. All right, so again, two, two things that we're gonna use today. We're gonna use some um, instant, sugar-free instant jello. Now this is just for, for show and it's not instant. This is a cooking one, but this is. So we're gonna use some chocolate pudding. You could use any flavor that you want um, to give your frosting whatever, whatever flavor works. I think like white chocolate is great. You could do vanilla. Um, there's several options there. All right, so all I'm gonna need is one tablespoon of the instant pudding mix. Um, I'm pretty sure that, you know, certain stores carry a lot more way in, in the way of flavor. Um, so yeah, my local Walmart super limited right now, but I was able to grab a few things that work great. All right, so the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use four ounces of heavy whipping cream. Now, I've got something measured out for the second recipe, so I'm gonna go back a little bit and make sure I've got this right. Um, four ounces, I'm just using the measuring cup. Obviously, you wanna measure liquid in a liquid measuring cup. So, we have a couple around here. Just giving it four ounces. Again, super simple, and again, you can always double, triple the recipe depending on how many, um, how many cupcakes you have to cover, right, with frosting. So, again, man, you could do butterscotch. God, butterscotch is from when I was a kid. Like, I know it's not super popular these days, but loved butterscotch. Okay, again, this is gonna be a little bit noisy. <clears throat> I'm just going to mix it until it's really, I mean, it's instant pudding, so it's going to mix fairly quickly um, and create a texture. So, let's give that a second. I've also got a rubber scraper to scrape down the sides just to make sure I get it all. I don't mind a hand mixer. I have a giant um, KitchenAid mixer, but I don't need it for this small of a recipe. All right, so you're gonna mix that until it's nice and thick and done. I'm gonna stop for a second and I'm gonna scrape down the sides. Now I am using cold, heavy whipping cream, which is gonna help the situation. Some of the ingredients in the next recipe are actually gonna call for room temperature. So you do wanna pay attention to that so you're ahead of the game. That's what happens to me. I always look and go, oh, oh, this needs to be room temperature, oops. Um, obviously because if you wanna be able to mix it better, it needs to be room temperature, but not so for this one. I've actually seen where people will use um, a metal bowl and put it in the freezer for a little bit and cool it off so that it works a little bit faster, that's a great idea too. Um, not a bad option. I like to be efficient, so that's part of that's part of the game. See, it's already getting thick. Yeah, super fast, super easy, right? Then I am gonna throw it in the fridge for a little bit and let it cool off and thicken just a little more. Yeah, perfect, look at that. Super, super easy, that's it, that's it. That's all it takes, right? You've got frosting, and I am gonna lick my finger. Mm. But that's half the fun. All right, so that is recipe number one. Again, this is, I did use a chocolate 
a chocolate option for the pudding, but you can use any flavor you want, right? All right, the second one that we're gonna do, to clean this off, is going to be a cream cheese frosting. Now, I am aware that not everybody loves cream cheese. Um, you know, a lot of people that are doing keto use cream cheese because as I've just grabbed one that is full fat, um, because remember if you're doing low, low carb or sugar free, you have to still provide nutrients and calories somehow. So usually when you're keto, you're much, much higher option for fat. I'm gonna rinse these just real quick. Um, so it's okay to do the full fat, right? Actually, the full fat tends to be healthier because it's less processed, especially when it comes to milk, which again, we don't drink a lot of in my house. We're, I'm pretty lactose intolerant, so I usually pretty much stay away from that. But the higher in fat, the less processed it is. I grew up on water flavored milk, thinking that I was doing the healthy option with skim milk. And of course, as I've learned, that is not true. But of course, at this point, I just don't do milk because I'm so lactose intolerant. All right, so I'm gonna throw this in the fridge and then we're gonna grab the bowl for the next set and we're gonna do a cream cheese option. So let me put this where it goes. Perfect. I love my fridge, I'm not gonna lie. All right, need something to wet my hands really quick. And we're gonna move on to the second one. Okay, so I did leave the cream cheese out to become room temperature, just because it needs to be room temperature for this. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to mix it. I am gonna use my hand mixer again, because I have this giant, I, used, I started out with a little KitchenAid, a little one um, that I had for years and years, like 15 years, and it finally just kind of gave up the ghost. Um, and so one year for Christmas, Costco was having a great sale, and so maybe you can see it in the background there, it's a great big giant KitchenAid mixer. And we do use it quite a bit, especially during the holidays. I love to bake. Most of it's healthy, but sometimes I throw in some other things, like I have the current famous pumpkin bread recipe that everybody, just September, starts asking me when it's coming out, which it's a great fall recipe. Okay, so the second one I'm going to do is the cream cheese. Now, I am making a half batch today just because um, it requires some sugar substitute. And to be honest, I just don't want to use a whole lot um, for this particular recipe. Um, I am going to be using Swerve Confectioner's sugar. Now, so my only issue when it comes to sugar substitutes is the, this does also contain urethritol, which is fine. I mean, it's, it's you know, generally recognized as safe. The only downside is when I eat too much of it, my, my guts kind of start to do some, it, it can cause some dysbiosis, some uh, digestive distress. So I really kind of limit how much of that that I do intake. And I do pay attention to the ingredient list because you would be surprised at what even some of our healthier options do contain. So keep that in mind. Definitely learn to read the ingredient list. That is part of being smart when you're trying to be healthy. Okay, so again, I'm gonna use four ounces of cream cheese that I've had sitting out for the morning. Um, so it is room temperature. And again, I'm doing a half batch, so normally it would be eight. I will leave the full recipe down below, um, and then you can make the, any uh, distinguish changes, things that you need to do there. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually cream this until it's light and fluffy. So going back to my hand mixer, I've had this thing for a very, very long time. Probably time for a new mixer, but to be honest, if it ain't broke, um, who cares, right? It still works. All right. I am of that generation of the use it up, wear it out, make it work, right? All right, so I'm gonna beat this until it's light and fluffy. It should only take a second. There we go. Three seconds a little bit. All right. Make it get out of the beaters there just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. I don't want it to be all stuck up in the beaters because I need the next ingredient to really be able to incorporate and spread out evenly through where it needs to go. All right, so the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a half a cup of the Swerve Confectioner sugar. Um, now, again, if you're using Pure or some other sugar substitute, you're going to have to go in and change that, change the amount. They don't cross over equal. So if you're using a half a cup of Swerve, it's not going to be the same of Pure or monk fruit or stevia or something to that effect. Keep that in mind. You're going to have to do a little homework on how to switch those out. Um, they're definitely, they also don't swap out equally with sugar. So if you're trying to make an exchange, you know, make a healthier version of something, you're going to have to do a little more research. It is possible. It is possible. That's how they came up with these, with these recipes. But you're going to have to figure that out because otherwise sugar substitutes are actually much, much sweeter. So you don't usually need the same amount of the product that you do of regular sugar. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna do a half a cup of my swerve. 
Perfect. And again, if you want to change the flavor on this, you can do that as well by adding either some extracts or unsweetened cocoa powder. Um, one of the best options that we've learned to use for certain decent swap outs is PB2, right? The powdered peanut butter. Really a great option, especially if you're not trying to add a lot of fat. Again, these are lower carb, low, you know, sugar free. So it's okay to add a little bit of fat back in there. I do use a lot of Adam's uh, all natural peanut butter because there's no sugar added. So definitely you can try some different things. Make this yours. That's what this is about is figuring out how to best use it for you. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on slow because you know confectioners makes a big, huge mess if you're not careful. So I'm just gonna do a little bit lower speed on my mixer because I'm the queen of making a mess. So, you know, it always happens, but. All right, so just trying to incorporate that really well. Now we're gonna add some heavy whipping cream. So it's looking a little chunky in there. Don't worry, we're gonna fix that in just a second. All right, so slowing it down. We got it all open. Perfect, all incorporated. I like that word, can you tell? All right, so I'm gonna get out of the beater. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to add the heavy whipping cream and some vanilla. So you're going for this one, again, kind of an odd amount. I'm doing a cup and an eighth. So honestly, it's a cup and two tablespoons is what it ends up being um, to work this. Now it will, as you mix the heavy whipping cream, if you've ever done anything with heavy whipping cream and you've mixed it for any amount of time, you know that it stiffens up and thickens. So you, it's not gonna be um, super liquidy as you go. All right, so there's my cup and then I'm gonna use my tablespoon. So one eighth cup is two tablespoons. Learned that one a long time ago too. As you get used to changing recipes, having them, making them different. You just learn how to figure out. You can, I mean, you can always use a calculator on the internet. It makes it super simple. All right, so I'm gonna add that, and I'm, I forgot to grab my vanilla, so let me grab that real quick. Perfect. I know vanilla's a little pricey, um, but we use a lot of it, so we tend to keep up with it. All right, so I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Last time we went to Mexico, we actually brought some home, but uh, yeah, we don't have any of that left. Because again, over the holidays, I like to bake. All right, making a mess, making a mess. At least I clean up. Okay, so we're gonna incorporate that in. We're gonna mix it on high speed. We're gonna stop every so often and scrape down the sides and make sure that we're getting everything into the mix. You don't wanna have a bunch. If you've ever made like cookies or cake or something and then went to pour it in the tin and realized it's still powdered down at the bottom and we missed half of that. We don't want that. We want to make sure that we get it all together. So again, a little noisy. Okay. So we're going to get that all incorporated. Over a few minutes, it's going to stiffen up and thicken. Courtesy of the heavy whipping cream. Like I said, we're going to scrape down the sides every few minutes just to make sure that it works. It gets all, all mixed up. Okay. Take a second and scrape down the sides. Now, again, you're going to need to refrigerate these if you're not gonna use these right away, or even if you do put it on the cupcakes, you're gonna to wanna to put the cupcakes in the fridge. Uh, you can freeze these as well, but you know, you might have to, it may change the texture. So don't know if that's your best option. I just tend to make this right as I get ready for whatever the recipe is that I'm going to put it on. Now, I personally, not that I'm super fancy, but you know, I used to want to be able to decorate cakes. And so at one point I bought a bunch of Wilton uh, cake, the tips, you know, the, the frosting tips and the bags. I don't even know what those are anymore, but what I do is I just go to the store and you can actually buy a really easy, inexpensive package of just a few of the plastic frosting bags and some, some plastic tips that go, you just throw them away when you're done, right? So not a bad option. I just like that it makes a cleaner, uh, as you're frosting your cakes, it makes it a much cleaner option so that you're not making a huge mess. Now, if you want to use a butter knife, by all means, just do that. But I kind of like making it look kind of fancy schmancy. So, all right, so we're going to continue to do this. I'm going to go on a little bit higher speed. All right. So it's going to take a couple of minutes, and I don't know that we're going to sit here and wait for that. Just what you're looking for is for it to thicken up and create some little bit stiff peaks. Right? A stiff peak would be as I raise it from my, my mixer from the bowl that it creates some stiff peaks. If you've ever, you know, mixed it, mixed the heavy whipping cream until you've gotten like a whipped cream, that's kind of what that's for. So I don't think we're gonna take that time today. Now again, if you wanna change the flavor, you can do that by adding some different flavorings, some extracts. Just make sure you're reading the ingredients on products. The biggest issue I come up with is people are using stuff and then when they realize, 
oh wow, my sugar-free creamer actually has vegetable oil in that. Isn't that bad for me? Yeah, actually it is. Um, they don't realize it's in it. They take the word for the manufacturer that what's in it makes it healthy and safe. Yeah, I don't know what, what point we decided to trust big corporations, but that is not how that works. You have to be your own best advocate. Make sure that it's a healthy option for you. So again, I'm gonna stop here, but here's what's gonna happen. On part two, not only am I gonna show you that, I'm actually gonna have one of these ready to go and I'm going to pipe it on a cupcake so you can see that it works great. Um, again, we're gonna give you about five recipes. You can choose whatever works best for you. If you need to be dairy-free, if you need to be you know, a certain whatever, if you can't do sugar substitutes, or maybe if stevia works better for you, I wanna have an option for everyone. So hopefully that gives you some great ideas. Again, if you don't know a cake recipe, you can actually go back to last week and look at our almond flour cupcake recipe, or Pinterest is your friend, dude. Like got so many options, that's where I, I come up with most of these. Now, I do read the ingredient list before I decide that it's a not good option, because sometimes it says healthy version. I'm like, yeah, maple syrup is still sugar, so that doesn't work for diabetics at this point. Now, I get my very best ideas from you, I have been given some great recipes from clients. As a matter of fact, again, here in the near future, because it's summer's coming, I've got a really great protein popsicle recipe coming up uh, that a good friend of mine, Tony, has given me. So you wanna keep checking back, and again, if you wanna see uh, past episodes, or if you wanna subscribe on my YouTube channel, you can watch and it'll tell you when a new one's popping up, and hopefully that gives you some great ideas on how to be healthy without having to eat super bland, boring food. So have an incredible week, you guys. Until next week, that is Meals with Melissa. Have an incredible day. Bye now.